the EMC webinar series six. We have Dr. Welin here. Uh, he is one of the I3 APS Young Professional Ambassador um, that to be with us today. So his title is Wireless Power Transfer Technology, Past, Now, and the Future. So this talk will introduce the history and developments of wireless power transfer technology and will be followed by a series of advanced antenna technologies for far field wireless power transfer and enable battery free IoT systems. Before uh, I invite Dr. Weyland, um, allow me to introduce a little bit about Dr. Weyland. Okay. Dr. Weyland received the PhD degree in electronic engineering from the City University of Hong Kong in 2016. He is currently a lecturer and ARCDE. CRA Fellow with the University of Technology, Sydney, Ultimo, New South Wales, Australia. He worked as a research associate with Nanyang Technology University, Singapore from August 2012 to August 2013. Dr. Lin has received many academic awards, which mainly includes the Australia Research Council, Discovery Early Career Researchers Award, DECRA 2021, Raj Mitra Travel Grant, RMTG in 2019, from the IEEE-AP Society, the Best Paper Award, first prize at the International Symposium on Antennas and Propagation, ISAP 2018. He also won the Best Young Professional Paper Award at the third Australian Micro Symposium, AMS 2018, the Best Poster Paper Award at the Second International Conference on Electromagnetic Materials and Technologies for the Future EMMTF 2017, a Talent Development Scholarship from the Hong Kong Government, and the Young Scientist Award at the IEEE Region 10 Conference. He also a recipient of Outstanding Receiver Award from the IEEE Antennas and Wireless Propagation Later, Letter 2018 and the IEEE Transaction on Antennas and Propagation Tab 2020 and 2022. He is also a senior member of IEEE and currently he is the IEEE Antennas Propagation Society Young Professional Ambassador. So without further ado, please welcome Dr. Welin. Oh, thanks very much for the moderators. Um, um, kind invitation and introduction um, to me. Um, now I would like to share my screen. Uh, your in present your entire screen. Yes. So it's my first time actually first time to use the the Google Meeting. So I'm sorry I'm not uh, familiar with the settings. Okay. Um, I think I I've been sharing my screen. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So now you can see my slides, right? Yep. Cool. Okay. All good. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> now uh, I'm in the uh, full screen mode. Um, I'm glad to be invited by the uh, AP uh, MTT uh, Malaysia uh, chapter. And um, um, I'm Dr. Wei Ling. Um, I'm currently the uh, 2002 IEEE APS uh, Young Professional Ambassador and also um, the lecture in the uh, uh, Australia Research Council DACRA Fellow at the University of Technology, Sydney, Australia. Um, so today I would like to share um, with you um, the um, some of my um, <clears throat> some of my work on the wireless power transfer technology and also in um, this talk I I saw there will be uh, many um, undergraduate or graduate students that not even learned the uh, the background of electromagnetics, but it is totally fine. I would like to uh, show you the uh, history and uh, development and uh, uh, future commercialization path of the wireless power transfer technology. So it's both suitable for uh, layman, um, uh, undergraduate student, or uh, the uh, senior uh, staff um, uh, about the technical uh, content. Um, again, it's my pleasure to be here and invited. 
Um, uh, talk about Malaysia. Actually, I really love uh, Malaysia. Um, I, I used to work uh, in uh, Singapore in uh, Nanyang Technology University for one year, back to, uh, like back back to uh, ten years, ten years ago. Uh, at that time, I usually uh, go to uh, Malaysia and many times, many many times. Um, I love everything there. I really wish I could be there one day in person and to meet you guys and the face to face, face to face. Um, okay, so now let's start the uh, the talk. So uh, first of all, um, I would like to introduce the uh, a little bit about the I triple Anus and the uh, uh, Propagation Society. So APS uh, for short. So our society is actually um, one of the biggest um, technical uh, professional co uh, communities in the world. And this covers a large range of uh, um, areas and the scientific uh, fields, including um, antennas, the series, the radiation, propagation, and wireless um, mobile satellites and communications, all kinds of wireless technologies um, that uh, were included in our community. And uh, talking about the, the future, the 6G is coming. So the 6G, um, we are not only talking about the connectivity on the Earth, but we uh, <coughs> also talk about the wireless uh, communications and applications in the space and uh, between the space and the, and, and the Earth. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities out there uh, for the 6G wireless communication, and our society have a lot of work to do. And uh, um, our uh, APS members has growing rapidly, and we now we have uh, almost 10,000 IEEE APS members, okay, by the uh, December last year. So now I believe the number will uh, exceed uh, 10,000. 10, 10, and in our region, we located at the region 10, um, the Asian uh, Pacific region, uh, including also Malaysia and China and also Australia. So we count like one third of the whole population uh, membership. And this number is growing really fast, really fast. And I, um, so, <coughs> Encourage that um, the uh, young professionals and students, if you are interested in our field, and uh, you are welcome to join our society, because our society will offer many benefits for for you, for young professional in particular, and we have research grants, we have uh, the particular awards and grants, travel grants, and also uh, we have uh, many different young professional activities. Um, as the uh, H I -E APS member, so please join us if you are one part of, of the um, <coughs> young professional studying this area. So, in particular, in this uh, um, year's uh, I -E International Symposium on Antennas Propagation, so this is the the biggest uh, conference in our field, uh, antennas propagation. And uh, after uh, two years, uh, uh, COVID, we are uh, we were online. Okay, um, the last year uh, should um, supposed to be in Singapore face to face, but unfortunately, <coughs> most of the uh, the uh, people in most of the regions cannot go. So, the uh, last year's APIs was online was online and very few uh, people attended uh, attended the face-to-face -face sessions. Uh, but this year, um, with the, the when after the restrictions uh, in most of the regions in the world have been list, uh, lifted, um, so the conference emphasized uh, the face-to-face -face meeting in um, next month. Uh, we already in June, <coughs> so in July, for 10 to 15, we will have um, a, uh, we can say the, the, the first conference, face-to-face uh, -face conference after the, the, the pandemic. And there will be a lot of attendance there. And uh, in particular, there's a lot of uh, uh, activities um, for young professionals. We 
uh, this year we have a brand new uh, event, okay, brand new event, which is the uh, uh, Korea Development and Growth uh, Conversations. Okay, we invited 10 uh, leaders from all the uh, academic and the government and also industry. So they are the senior leaders in their areas. We invited 10 of them to share their thoughts and to uh, provide guidance to our young professionals who registered in this event. And if you ha have any questions and any thoughts and uh, um, uh, would like to seek any help and you can attend this uh, uh, event and uh, learn and seek the uh, uh, advice from the uh, leaders in our field. So this is uh, particularly for young professionals. And we also have the young professional reception, uh, which is the uh, more uh, uh, casual event and uh, people getting together and uh, know each other and have some fun. Um, we went in the uh, um, the uh, game room and we can play some uh, uh, the table game. Okay, <laughs> so this is the um, the event that uh, uh, young professionals uh, can join and benefit. So uh, again, I encourage that uh, um, <coughs> if you attend an APS, please. Uh, attend this event okay please attend this event and join the actual ap society okay now let's go back to the uh, the talk okay in this talk um i will divide into uh, two parts and the first part i will introduce the the history of wireless power uh, transfer technology and its commercialization and then i will uh, introduce the uh, research development uh, in our group, okay, at the uh, U uh, University of Technology Sydney, uh, in particularly for the the WPT uh, enabled uh, battery free uh, IoT system. Last but not the least is the uh, conclusion and some uh, future works. Okay, so <laughs> the WPT uh, technology is actually um, divided into two two parts. Okay, uh, one part um, is the near field inductive WPT. So this technology has been well studied and has been commercialized successfully, and we have already seen many um, electronic products that enable such function. Okay, such function. So these are basically uh, use the near field, um, magnetic field, and electric field, okay, to transfer the power from one device to another. So let's look at the silence behind the near field inductive WPT. Uh, talking about this technology, we need to mention two um, giant uh, uh, scientists. The first is MPEG. Okay, everyone should be familiar with Ampere's law. In 1826, Ampere's law was proposed. And it's talking about what it's talking about if you have a constant current, for example, flowing on a straight wire or flowing on a coil or torrent, you the constant current will generate constant magnetic field right so if you have uh, let me see if i can use so if you have a constant wire current the magnetic field is around the wire right we, we uh, must learn it in our high school phases and if you have the toil um, current the magnetic field is in the axis of the the coil okay access of a coil but <coughs> this uh, laid the foundation of the relation between the current electric field and magnetic field but this cannot make while this power transfer happen until another giant guy michael faraday invented faraday's law of induction 
So which actually uh, tells us the change of the um, magnetic flux in the space will create elect electro multi force. Okay, multi force. If you place, for example, here, if we have the uh, one coil have the time varying man, um, magnetic flux. If you have a secondary coil put inside the field, the power will coupled from the primary coil to the secondary coil, such that the wireless power transfer is happening. Okay, is happening. The the essence is that you need to have the time varying magnetic field. Okay, time varying magnetic field, but uh, you cannot have the uh, constant magnetic field. Okay, so you you only um, need to have use a uh, AC, the time varying magnetic field, or time varying current, to enable the near field WPT. Okay, near field WPT. After um, the commercialization of the uh, near field WPT is actually developing during the uh, uh, recent decades, back to uh, like uh, 2008, okay, 2008. And now this uh, technique is uh, kind of uh, mature, okay, mature technology. And I believe that many of you have uh, already used such uh, products, okay, WPD products to uh, charge your uh, smartphone, smartwatch, okay, smartwatch. So uh, basically the device is like a, a charging pad, okay, a charging pad. On the pad, there is the, uh, what inside is actually a, a coil, okay, it's a coil. And uh, on in the coil is the uh, uh, AC a current on that, and it will induce the um, magnetic field, okay, magnetic field. And in your uh, phone or a smartwatch, there is a secondary coil, coil there. Once you, you align to the axis of the two coils together, and uh, the energy will be uh, transferred from the primary coil to the secondary coil, such that the WPT um, is realized. Uh, is realized, uh, but the key drawback of such uh, technology is that the um, distance is very, very uh, limited. Uh, uh, for for those who you have ever used uh, this near field WPP charging, you may uh, have the experience that you have to align very accurate, okay, very accurately. Um, between your phone and the charging pad, and if you um, miss alignment a little bit, the the charging will not happen. Okay, will not happen because um, the transferring efficiency only uh, very high when the two coils are aligned together. Okay, exactly on the axis. If it miss a little bit, the efficiency will drop significantly. So there's a, a create the problem of the distance. And some other uh, technology, recent technology, they use the uh, magnetic resonance charging. So what uh, what they do is uh, they put a um, capacitor in series of the, the coil. So, so the coil equivalent circuit model is an inductor to create a resonance. So um, if the secondary coil also have such same resonance, the um, charging distance can be extended uh, to several centimeters, but it is still very, very low, okay? Very um, near, okay? Only we can say up to like uh, several centimeters, so centimeters, so distance is very low. Um, so uh, this kind of technology is actually uh, uh, mature. So uh, on the Element 14, it's a website that we can uh, by the uh, the components, electronic components, we can just use the six sixty uh, Australian dollar to buy a uh, transmitting coil model. Okay, from the company TDK. Okay, from company TDK. So we can use this model to develop our own applications. So um, it's basically have the coil there and have the uh, the source generator that can generate the the frequency, the high frequency current. 
uh, on the coil. Okay, so this kind of uh, is mature. And uh, um, another um, <laughs> thing we need to mention that so all this kind of uh, uh, near field WPT, they they have already have the uh, standard. So we call the the Qi standard. Okay, Qi standard, and uh, which was established in two thousand and eight. So um, the this standard. It's actually very interesting. They come from the um, the Chinese word uh, qi. Okay, qi is in Chinese is uh, uh, is like a Chinese kung fu. It's kind of energy. Okay, it's kind of energy, and um, so the qi you cannot see it, but you, it has the uh, in massive energy. Okay, in massive energy. So in some Chinese movie, so um, those uh, uh, kung fu guy they can use qi to actually. Uh, punch people in uh, the meters away okay so uh so this, this is the, the the best description uh to represent the the wpt technology because it's uh um you cannot see the power but it's actually happening wildly okay and if you look at the current uh, uh charging pad on the back side it have to be certified by this standard so every every product must be uh, certified by a uh, qi standard before they go to market and to to sell okay to sell and currently a uh, more than 3700 qi certified uh, products okay on the market today on the market today okay so um let us uh See a video, watch a video about the uh, the near future and how it's been regulated. But Willin, sorry, does does the video has a, a sound? Because we couldn't hear the sound. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we uh we couldn't hear the sounds of the video. Do the video have no a sound? sound? Yeah. Yes, on my side I have. Oh okay. So Am I the one who's having problems? Uh, okay, yeah, that is actually just a Google Meet uh, problem. We When we share video, right, we need to change our audio in the setting there. We need to change to stereo mix in the microphone. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me see how, how can I change. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you just go to the setting, I think. Uh, I mean the setting at the, our Google Meet. You need the three to, dots, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you need to left your yeah full screen, then you go to your Google Meet. Okay, okay, let me check. Yeah. Okay, uh, now I went there. That so setting, yeah, setting. Okay. And then uh, microphone. Uh, oh, wait for microphone. Oh, yeah. okay, zoom uh, audio device. Uh, uh, so if I, if I yeah. is that uh, zoom audio device? Microphone, uh, right? Oh, okay. My here is have like mix studio, a stereo mix, but I'm not sure yours. Maybe we can try this. Uh, oh, after you change this, we can't hear you. <laughs> mm, maybe you try to play the sound, then let's see how, I mean, the play the video. Yeah, later when you want to speak, then you need to change back. Yeah, that's the issue for Google Meet. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay, let's try uh, the video once again. Oh, it seems like it doesn't work. Then. Uh, maybe, maybe I can. Uh, I can share me the um. I mean, like the link for the YouTube, so that I can share it. Yeah. Uh, and Doctor Vili, so you need to change back the audio so we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, the setting. Oh, this one said that it's okay. We can read the caption. Change back. Uh, hello, hello. I change back. Ah, yes. Right? Now we can hear you. 
That's interesting. Um, yep. Now you can back. Caption, additional captions. Um, strange. Uh, I just played that you cannot hear, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you Do you can. have the link of the of the YouTube? Perhaps you can paste uh, at the at the chat. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Doctor Sai can play it for us. Yeah, then then she mm. will share her screen for the video. Okay. Uh, I, I would say if I just yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Now I can hear it. Uh, you can now hear, right? Okay. I, yeah, I now I can. Full screen. Okay. I will not do full screen and just show it here. Okay. I can hear it just now. All good? No, I can't hear. Is it working or not? Um, for the sound, it's not working. I cannot hear the sound. Yeah, that that's good. No, okay. no, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot hear it. You you cannot cannot oh yeah okay um okay so uh let's uh copy video okay i can send in the chat box because i have a uh, uh, couple of the uh the videos to share okay couple of videos to share so um let's see so uh i I type the link. I all type right, the link. Me, all right, let me try uh, play it um, and then share it to everybody. And yeah. So, uh, but right now I can hear. Everyone else can hear? You can hear? Um, I hear your voice, but the video, I think you haven't run it. Oh, okay. hang on. I think, I think that is my video. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, anyone hear hear the sound? No, I cannot hear. It's okay, Doctor Lee. Uh, Doctor Lee Wailin, uh, let me take over the uh the presentation. I'll share the video. Is it okay? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let me um make it a presentation. Okay. All right. Share now. I hope mine is working. Okay. Let's see. Again, let me check my yeah. audio first. I can see. All right. Okay. Can you hear it? No. Oh, okay. No. Let me let me check. Oh, no, no, can. Oh. Is it is it too low or? It's a bit, little bit low. Can. And um, I. I let me do it again. Uh, it's presenting. I think the sound for the um, this one. Wireless, wireless charging has been around since the late, the late 19th, 19th century, century when electricity, when electricity pioneer, pioneer Nikola, Nikola Tesla, Tesla demonstrated, demonstrated magnetic, magnetic resonant, resonant coupling, coupling. The, ability the ability to transmit, to transmit electricity. electricity. Is it okay the sound or it has okay, an yeah. equal? Okay, I can hear the sound. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So I'll start again, yeah? Yeah. Right. But this is a little bit uh, uh, echo. A bit echo? Yeah. Oh, Wireless, Wireless charging, charging has been around, been around since the late 19th century when electricity pioneer Nikola Tesla demonstrated magnetic resonant coupling, the ability to transmit electricity through the air by creating a magnetic field between two circuits, a transmitter and a receiver. But for about 100 years, it was a technology with few practical uses, except perhaps for electric toothbrushes. Today, there are nearly a half dozen wireless charging technologies in use or being piloted, all aimed at cutting cables to everything from smartphones and laptops to kitchen appliances and cars. Wireless charging is making inroads in the healthcare, automotive, and manufacturing industries because it offers the promise of increased mobility and the ability to power tiny Internet of Things devices from many feet away. 
Someday, wearable medical sensors could be charged by router-like devices meters away. The most popular wireless technologies now in use, however, rely on an electromagnetic field created between two copper coils, which greatly limits the distance between a device and a charging pad to a few millimeters. That's the type of charging Apple introduced with the iPhone 8 in 2017, and what Android smartphones used even earlier. Broadly speaking, there are three types of wireless charging. Tightly coupled inductive, loosely coupled resonant, and uncoupled charging. The latter sends power through radio frequencies, infrared beams, even ultrasound. It offers exciting promise, but without mass production, widespread adoption is likely years away. When wireless charging first gained interest from tech vendors nearly a decade ago, there were three wireless charging standards groups focused on inductive and resonance charging specifications. The Alliance for Wireless Power, A4WP, the Power Matters Alliance, PMA, and the Wireless Power Consortium, WPC. WPC's members include Apple, Google, Verizon, and a veritable who's who of electronics manufacturers. In 2015, the WPC and PMA merged to form the Airfuel Alliance, which now supports the development of several wireless charging protocols, mainly Qi. The A4WP, which began in 2012, supports the Resonance Charging Protocol. It can transfer power up to 5 centimeters. Members include Broadcom, Intel, Qualcomm, Samsung Electronics, and Ytricity. Today, the market is dominated mostly by charging pads that use both tightly coupled inductive and loosely coupled resonant charging. They operate on the same principle. A time-varying magnetic field induces a current in a closed loop of wire. The only difference? Resonance charging offers more leeway in how you position a device to be charged. With tightly coupled inductive charging, you've got to be spot on in your placement of a device being charged. Much of the industry has united around the Qi standard, which enables inductive or pad-style charging and short distance, one and a half centimeters or less, electromagnetic resonant inductive charging. Eventually, wireless charging hardware could be as invisible as Wi-Fi is now, enabling mobile devices, IoT sensors, and even healthcare wearables to trickle charge throughout the day even as you're walking through a room. For now, however, the market will be dominated by charging pads. All right. So in this video is actually uh, Vivid introduced the uh, the near field WPT and its uh, uh, regulations. As I said, the um, the standard is called the Qi standard um, that has been um, proposed uh, 13, uh, 14 years ago. Okay, fourteen years ago. Um, so let me your screen is visible. Okay, so now come back to my screen. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. Um, however, the the drawback is also noticeable for the current um, near field WPT technology. That is, uh, the distance is very short, very short. Okay, although it has been applied in the uh, electrical toothbrush, a smartphone, pad, charging pads, smart watches, and uh, even some research had been going on in the uh, uh, electrical vehicles for the wireless charging in the near field technology. But um, the, the common drawback of such technology is the distance is very short. It's very short, okay? I'm talking about the less than uh, several centimeters, it's very short. So we would like to achieve long distance um, wireless power transfer the only way we can achieve this is to use electromagnetic waves to propagate, to trans transmit the power, okay? Transmit the power. So the science behind the uh, uh, electromagnetic waves, um, we need to mention one great uh, science. It's one of, of greatest science in the world. His name is James Maxwell. Okay, if you study electromagnetics, you should um, be familiar with this name. Okay, um, James uh, Maxwell in 1864, he invented the, uh, the Maxwell equations. Um, the equations, these four equations are very beautiful. They actually describe the relation between 
the uh, time varying electric fields and the time varying magnetic field. It tells us what it tells us the uh, changing magnetic fields will induct the electric field. Again, the time varying uh, changing electric field will again um, induce the magnetic fields such that the, the two fields will interact with each other and propagate from origin to a long distance okay from long distance maxwell increase actually in uh, 1864 he already predict the exist of the electromagnetic waves by the mathematics okay but uh, it's all, all at that time it's only a prediction okay it's prediction no one have proved, okay, have proved the existence of that. It's only the prediction. We can say it's not easy, okay, it's not easy um, from the science to the uh, practical engineering, the trans transformation is not easy. Only after, we can say 23 years later. So during that time, many uh, engineers and the, and the scientists they are trying to prove okay they're trying to prove proof the existence of the electromagnetic waves because Maxwell if Maxwell's equation already told us there is something like that should exist in the world only after 23 years later um, Henry Hertz okay Henry Hertz in 1887 as the first time, has verified the existence of uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay, so verified the micro, uh, Maxwell's equations. So basically, he used uh, um, a setup and showing here in the uh, right lower figure. Okay, he actually used a spark. Okay, spark gap, and to to change to um, uh, turn on and off the switch. Okay, on the spark to induce the high voltage. Okay, high voltage, um, and on the other side he used a loop. Okay, so it's kind of a loop antenna. Okay, loop antenna to receive. Okay, to receive the uh, uh, electromagnetic waves transmitted from the uh, the spark. Okay, transmitted by the spark. So he that first time verified the existence of the uh, electromagnetic waves. So that laid the foundation for the far field okay far field uh wireless power transfer and of course the uh, modern wireless uh inform information trans uh communication okay as well as the uh the far field okay wireless power transfer uh okay now uh, the first conceptual idea of the uh, using the uh wireless power to trans uh, transmit power from one location to a long distance location is actually the idea is actually from um, the another great guy, okay, Nikola Tesla, okay, Nikola Tesla, back in the uh, uh, the early 19, 19s, okay, nineteens, um, Nikola Tesla want to enable the far fields uh, wireless power transfer all around the world, all around the world, by building his giant Tesla coils, okay? They, they thought was to place many of this, this giant Tesla tower in all around spread around the world that they can transmit the power from one side to another. So they can actually transmit the power from all over the world, wirelessly, wirelessly. However, his, uh, this attention was failed. Okay, was filled. So um, let's look at that, like the story behind this. Uh, so here we have another video. Uh, so please, uh, uh, moderator, please help uh, <coughs> play it. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, can you share me the link? All right. Yes. You cannot. No. No sound. Right. No, no sound. Right. Yeah, no sound. Okay, okay. Then I can um, play it. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay, this one, yeah. So this video actually tells us the, the, the story behind the 
Nikola Tesla's okay Tesla attempt for the far field wireless power transfer. Uh, let's see uh, why it's not successful. Okay, that's why it's not successful. So this video actually shows um, us uh, his idea and uh, the application. Okay. Vengeance, the Tesla, Tesla coil, 1891. The inventor, Nikola Tesla, had dreamed of supplying the world with electricity wirelessly. Tesla developed a device in 1891 which could produce bolts of high voltage electricity known as the Tesla coil. The device has a primary coil which passes a current onto a secondary coil, creating a high voltage and low current which shoots out a lightning-like discharge. Tesla put on demonstration showing how the Tesla coil could be used to power light bulbs wirelessly nearby. He also held the light bulbs up close to the Tesla coil, powering them without harm to himself. From 1899 to 1900, Tesla built a new laboratory in Colorado Springs, and it is here that he built a larger version of his Tesla coil called the magnifying transmitter. It measured 51 feet or 15.5 meters in diameter and could reach outputs of up to 12 million volts. With this version of the Tesla coil, the inventor could light up three incandescent bulbs at 100 feet or 30 meters away. One night, the magnifying transmitter overloaded during an experiment, burning out the power station and turning the town dark, terrifying the locals. In 1901, with funding from businessmen, Tesla built his next larger transmitter, this time in New York, named the Wardenclyffe Tower. Tesla had acquired the investment by pitching his proposed World Wireless System as a way of communicating across the world by broadcasting messages, as well as delivering electricity wirelessly. Physicist and radio pioneer Guglielmo Marconi would send the first Atlantic wireless transmission in 1901 using Tesla's ideas, but Tesla was not interested in wireless messages as much as wireless power. Nevertheless, while wireless messaging worked, there was no proof that wireless power could work beyond a short range. By 1904, Tesla's investors had pulled out, and with staggering debts, the Wardenclyffe Tower was eventually demolished in 1917. In the early 20th century, the Tesla coil would be used for a number of things, including radios, medicine, x-rays, electrotherapy, and for entertainment. But in the present day, the Tesla coil has been replaced by more modern circuitry. Subscribe for more history videos. So, okay, so, so this is a story behind um, uh, Tesla's okay, conception to use the wireless power. And um, eventually, now, okay, change back, okay. So eventually, it's filled, okay, it's filled because um, the science behind behind this uh, uh, technology is still the near field, okay, near field wireless power transmission, okay, near field wireless power transmission. So the um, distance is still very near, okay, it's still very near. Only we can, we, we, sh we will use the electromagnetic waves, a microwave to enable the far field, okay, wireless power transfer, okay, only we we can use the electromagnetic waves to enable the far field wireless power transfer. Um, the first, okay, the first, uh, um, the far field uh, WPT demonstration, okay, um, was demonstrated by uh, William Brown in Racing, okay, in Racing, in uh, 1964. Okay, in the following slides, I will introduce the um, the engineering uh, milestones on the uh, uh, the real okay the real far field uh, WPT by using the uh, uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay, so the first the long range of the WPT demo was uh, uh, realized by William Braun. Okay, William Braun is uh, a very important uh, <coughs> um, engineer. Okay, engineer. In the history of far field WPT, he is uh, uh, the first. Okay, so he's the first person who invented the right antenna. Okay, that's very important. The right antenna is a device that consists of a receiving antenna and uh, um, also a uh, rectifier circuit. So the right antenna 
can capture the electromagnetic waves in the open space in the open space and the rectified circuit will um, capture the wave and convert the wave into the DC power and um, to enable the uh, following cascaded electronic devices okay devices um, so it's first invented by uh, YC Brown okay by uh, WC Brown and um, what he, did, he he demonstrated is he is for, at first time he used the uh, um, the dish antenna you can see here the dish antenna to power up a self positioning okay uh, helicopter helicopter which is empowered by the rectangle array okay the rectangle array in the distance of eighteen point three meters so this demonstrates the wireless power. Okay, by using the uh, electromagnetic waves is feasible. It's feasible. It's the first time it demonstrate. So after this um, uh, experiment and many people and um, uh, many uh, uh, organization in the world have uh, draw much interest on the far field WP technology because it have uh, uh, several very interesting applications in the future and uh, the um, Many development have been have been going on there. After like around eleven years, JPL and NASA they actually um, demonstrate the first at the first time the very high power okay WPT transmission, and uh, they utilize the rectangle efficiency up to eighty two percent eighty two percent. Okay, 82%. And the overall, uh, DC to DC to end to end, um, from the transmission to the receiver, the overall efficiency, they can achieve 54%. So which is uh, uh, impressive. And this experiment make the uh, real application feasible because we are talking about the, uh, the efficiency, okay? If the efficiency is high enough, so the power transmission is feasible. And um, in 1975, they also demonstrated the very high power, okay, high power wireless power transmission in the distance around 1.5 kilometers, okay, long distance and, and high power, which um, indicate the far field WPT is feasible, okay, it's feasible. So later on, people. Um, exploring the space and they want to develop the uh, the uh, solar satellite program so the japanese sky um they send the uh, uh uh the wpt the device in the space in 1983 and uh, demonstrated the um the wpt application from the space to the earth okay from the space to the earth so many uh, projects going on that trying to capture the solar energy in the space and uh, uh, transmit the energy to the to the Earth by microwave beams by microwave beams. Um, the longest WPT experiment uh, was conducted in two thousand and eight in the uh, Hawaiian Islands. So the distance can go up to one hundred forty eight kilometers between two Hawaiian islands. And um, the WPT technology is particular um, important uh, for the isolated islands. Okay, if you have many isolated islands, the uh, wired wired power transmission is very expensive and maybe not impossible uh, for many countries um, with the less population. So um, this kind of technology is. Um, um, suitable to transmit the power to the isolated islands. Okay, so isolated islands. And uh, now um, we have the video about the uh, um, the world record high power far field demo. Okay, by the JPL and the NASA. And uh, uh, let's take a look at. So I will copy.
Okay, so um, faculty, please. Oh, what's happening here? Why? Yeah, it's um, first time I use this uh, Google <laughs> and copy. Okay, see why. It's mm, interesting. Okay, just wait for. Yeah, I cannot copy this. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. Um, yeah, I start copying. Yeah, I, I I click, but there's nothing pop up. Mm -hmm. Um, see. maybe you can click um, at the YouTube. Uh, down the X on the YouTube. Perhaps the video came up at the YouTube. Let's see. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once I, I, I put the chat box, it's, uh, it's not showing here. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it cannot and, be uh, Can you please uh, just tap this, this, this uh, uh, address? Okay, okay. okay, let me try, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think it's uh, some problem in the, the website mode of the Google Meeting. Mm. Oh, hang on. Oh, it is that. Let me. Um, can you can you type type this? Type this. Yeah, thing? I'm typing it, but yeah. it says that. Oh, okay. All right, Dr. Lee. Okay. All right, thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me share now. Okay, oh, please, uh, yeah, mute yourself, yeah, as is I close. And no, this is not just a not, not this one. Not, not this one, it's a, the first one. It's, Oh, I see. Uh, is it which one? Uh, sorry. Um, is uh, in in my you know, in my link, this one. I try to copy, but but it's not working there. Uh, okay, okay. I I will type again. Can you uh just enter in the browser there so I can know the YouTube name. Uh, yeah, so this one. Go. Okay, okay. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> it's a video about the um the wars. <clears throat> First, the uh, record of the high power and long distance WPT. Is it, it the NASA wireless? NASA wireless power? Is it? Uh, Is it this one? Yeah. Okay, can you share? Okay, let me try. Yeah. I think it's the NASA wireless power. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. I don't know why I. I cannot paste in the chat box, but I can, I can do that before. <laughs> and verifications of electric power transfer efficiency. All right, is it this yeah. one? Yes, yes. The technology of wireless power transmission is not without precedent. 
significant demonstrations and verifications of electric power transfer efficiency and high power delivery. Hmm? It's off. Uh, okay. The technology of wireless power transmission is not without precedent. Significant demonstrations and verifications of electric power transfer efficiency and high power delivery at long range have been accomplished by NASA. The most dramatic of these was the NASA JPL Goldstone demonstration conducted in 1975 in which 34,000 watts of power was safely transmitted over 1.5 kilometers at an efficiency of greater than 82 percent. It was then and remains today what can be called the world record for high power long distance wireless power transmission. The NASA JPL Venus Station 26 meter antenna with its 500,000 watt transmitter was used to perform a 1.54 kilometer wireless power transmission to a rectenna array located on the Goldstone site's collimation tower. 4,590 rectenna elements with high efficiency gallium arsenide diodes were fabricated at the Raytheon microwave and power tube lab and assembled in rectenna subarrays of about one meter square. From each DC output of the 17 subarrays, approximately one third of the power was routed to a pair of 300 watt lamps. The lamps were arranged in the geometry of the rectenna array and wired to corresponding positions such that illumination of the lights would represent the received power beam at the rectenna. Of the calibrated RF power flux density that fell on the 24 square meter rectenna array on June 5, 1975, 82.5% was collected and converted to direct current output. It can be seen from the results of the successful 54% end-to-end laboratory demonstration of wireless power transmission and the successful test at Goldstone of sending 34 kilowatts at a mile range that we can confidently predict the performance of a wireless power transmission system, whether it be direct or laser or microwave or with relays, and this technology should help NASA have successful missions in the future. <clears throat> okay. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Um, so, <clears throat> this actually demonstrated the world's uh, the longest, okay, the first, um, the very long and high power, okay, wireless power transfer that uh, uh, the received power can go to 30.4 kilowatt okay kilowatt and its operating frequency is same as our wi-fi frequency uh, 2.45 gigahertz okay gigahertz so this uh, um um indicate that the long distance and high power uh wpt is feasible okay is feasible and um Currently, the commercialization of the far field, okay, WPT technology, actually focuses on two paths, okay, two paths, and one part is for the indoor indoor applications, and to power up because currently uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few uh, electronic devices for each each person, right, each person, and all these devices need power. And it need energy. Okay, it need energy, and uh, charging these uh, um, electric devices is a problem. So in the future, many companies are already working on this project. So uh, if you walk into a uh, room, okay, indoors, so it's a kind of indoor application. So in the room environment, um, so we're gonna have uh, many um, this uh, WPT transmitter on the ceilings of the. Um, of the uh, of the room and you cannot even notice them okay you cannot even notice them but it can um, track your phone okay track your uh, phone position and transmit power by a very narrow beam okay very, na very narrow beam and to um, transmit power if your device is required to charge okay you could require to charge so it's a uh, one like application scenario in the near future and many companies startups and also the researchers they're working on um, collaboratively to make this happen make this happen and um, 
this is the indoor okay indoor uh, applications and another application is the uh, the outdoor and uh, uh, very high high very high um, power uh, application which is the uh, solar power satellite it's a very giant project that can only be um, be developed by um, the the nation okay by whole a whole whole nation okay whole nation and um, uh, currently many uh, giant powers in the world uh, for example the the, the United States um, the Japan China and the uh, European Union and they have um, this kind of program a solar set power satellite which um, aims to capture the solar power from the sun in the space and then transmit the power collected in the space to the ground using the microwave beam okay using the microwave beam one reason is that the solar energy in the space is much higher than the energy in the earth because uh say uh it's six six fold in density okay six fold in intensity the solar power in the space and on the earth the solar power um you know uh we have only when the sun is uh, when there's no clouds okay only when no clouds and um, we can capture the solar energy but if it's uh, uh, cloudy and it's raining and most of the time at night and we cannot use it so the usage rate is actually very low okay very low so um the capture the, the solar power in the space is the uh, the ideal okay it's the ideal um way to uh, use the solar energy because the solar energy is is uh, Im immense and is uh, 24 7 we are 24 7 so um the program is to uh sending out the the satellite uh, to capture the power and then use the microwave beam to to uh transmit the power back to down the earth and then it's powering our the power grid and to our uh, city to human beings okay um there is a the picture shows the um, predicted okay so shows the predicted um the application of this solar power satellite um i think it's a pro program that been developed in, in china and it will achieve the gigawatt level okay uh power by 2050 okay 2050 so that is uh, the target the target so um this is the outdoor applications outdoor applications and uh, because of the limit of time so um so here is another um video so if you're interested please just tap the future of my microwave power beaming okay just tap this and you can watch it it's actually sh it, it is the, the most very recent demonstration of the uh, microwave uh, wireless power transfer um in the united states uh connected by the uh u.s Na navy so it's actually uh, demonstrate that the the appropriate frequency to um, enable the solar satellite is around 10 gigahertz. Okay, it's around 10 gigahertz um, because it's a trade-off. If you go to higher frequency, the path loss will become significant. Okay, significant. Um, and around the 10 gigahertz is uh, uh, the best, okay? It's a uh, ideal, okay, frequency range that uh, the electromagnetic waves can uh, go through our atmosphere uh, uh, without a uh, huge loss, okay? With, without huge loss. And another commercialization of the uh, far field is um, the indoor application. So this video is uh, uh, is interesting, and uh, I think this is the last video, and i show you. and. Uh, Please, uh, uh, faculty, can you please share this video? Yes, yes, sure. I, I typed in the chat box. Can you please sh share this video uh, to us? Please say there's a uh, indoor, okay, indoor application, okay, indoor application. Let's see. Um, it's the future of the wireless power. It's not working. Yeah, it seems like it's not working. Oh, it's, it's U, U T U. Okay, T U, not T. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe maybe typo. 
EU, not TH. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, me, me, I'll charge technology. Yeah, the, okay. Yes. Okay, so let's see the the future uh while it's charging for mobile mobile devices. Okay. What does charging look like in the future? Imagine walking into a room and your phone automatically begins charging. Today, we're bringing this closer to reality. Introducing Mi Air Charge technology. Using a system made up of 144 antennas, this transfers energy to the smartphone in the form of an extremely narrow millimeter wide wave beam. Within a few meters, we offer a 5 watt remote charging solution. Taking that a step further, it also supports multi-device charging, charge on the move, while gaming, or even when something's in the way. Looking ahead, smart living goes truly wireless. This isn't science fiction. This is technology. Me air charge technology. <clears throat> okay. Um, so this demo is a, a very recent um, demo from uh, Xiaomi okay, company that this is the future, okay? This is the future of the um, how to charge device, mobile device um, as mobile devices. So in this demonstration, they use millimeter wave, okay? They use millimeter wave um, technology, okay? Not the microwave. It's because um, for the indoor application, the transmission distance required is not um, that that long, okay? Several meters, we're talking about several meters. So millimeter wave technology is ideal, okay? It's ideal for the indoor applications, for the indoor applications. Um, this is the, yeah, this is the future. Hope, hope such technology will be um, in the market, okay? Very soon, very soon. So that we, we, we will, do not need to use the cable to charge our um, mobile phones anymore. Okay, anymore. That's the, um, the the fantastic future. Okay, that's a fantastic future. So um, our target. Okay, our target is. Uh, I just introduced the history of the WPT. Okay, and is uh, uh, commercialization. So our research is targeted on the far field WPT. Okay, for the uh, IoT devices, uh, because a limited of time, I will give a brief introduction of the uh, the works we have been done at UTS, and all these works um, we have the paper published. So if you're interested, so just uh, um, search our paper, and you can read our paper um, after the seminar. Okay. Um, first, I would like to introduce the uh, the research environment at our university. Um, in particular, in the area of antennas propagation, and uh, we our un university is actually very strong. Um, in particular, in Australia, we uh, are number one uh, university in Australia uh, in the area of an anten uh, antennas and electromagnetics, electromagnetism, and we have the world class and uh, ex experimental facilities. We have the uh, very large. Uh, economic chamber that can measure the frequency uh, from 750 micros to, to 50 gigahertz, okay, 50 gigahertz. And we also can measure the the, um, the frequency up to uh, 90 gigahertz. And now we are developing the device can measure terahertz, terahertz frequencies. And we have the uh, uh, world leading membership, uh, mentorships at UTS. Uh, my advisor is uh, uh, Professor uh, Richard Zorkowski, and uh, uh, who is a recipient of the uh, IEEE uh, Electromagnetics Award. So, which is uh, 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 we can say is is the uh, highest uh, uh, award in the field of the ele electromagnetics. Electromagnetics, and we also have other uh, IEEE fellows in our field. It's like the distinguished professor uh, Jay Guo. Uh, he's also director of uh, our center, the Global Big Data Technology Center, and also a uh, distinguished professor, uh, Karu Esso, and uh, uh, distinguished professor, Trevor Burke. 
Uh, we are very strong okay, uh, in the electromagnetics. So if the students, if you are <coughs> interested in the, our field, and uh, you're also welcome to um, to participate in the uh, exchange program or visiting uh, to our center, okay, to our center. And uh, uh, now I will give a brief introduction about uh, the research that we did um, in our group. Uh, we are targeting on, so we, things that I have introduced before, the near field WPT is already a mature technology, right? Um, the cur current, the challenge is to realize the far field, okay, far field, um, the WPT. So our research focused on the far field WPT, in particular for the Internet of Things applications, is because um, the current drawback of the uh, Internet of Things uh, devices is that so all um, the devices are powered by the chemical batteries, okay, chemical batteries, they have short life and bulky, and also they create a non-degradable waste, and they have a danger of explosion. And I believe that many of you may heard the news that the lithium based the batteries they will, they will explode. Okay, some cases explode and cause fires. So in particular for applications, for example, the uh, forest fire uh, detection applications, we cannot use lithium. Okay, battery based devices, and in some applications. And um, it is impossible to replace the batteries. For example, it's embedded devices, embedded inside the objects, in bridges, in trees, or embedded inside human body. You cannot take the device out to for the battery replacement, right? So for all this kind of applications, we need um, the wireless power transfer is the only option to provide the power, okay, provide the power. So we need a system like that. We need both the transmitter and the receiver, okay? For the transmitter side, we need the transmitter to deliver the energy in the long distance and have the large radiation coverage. So we need the antenna array, um, which can achieve the high directivity and the large radiation coverage as well, okay? Coverage as, as well. And uh, for the uh, receiver side, we need the right antenna to have a very um, the compact size, okay? Compact size and also high uh, directivity, high performance. So we want to make the uh, rectenna small, but maintain or even achieve um, better, okay, better uh, wireless power capture capability. Okay, that is a challenge, okay, in such applications, in such applications. So uh, what we did so far is actually we have developed a series of uh, uh, ultra compact, highly efficient rack tenders, okay, as a wireless power receiver. So um, they achieved the, uh, the uh, performance like ultra compact and a very high efficiency, low cost, highly integrated and multifunctional, multifunctional, okay, because the limit of time, I will not go through in details, I will uh, just show you the uh, <coughs> The, 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 the concept, so the first is the uh, electric small frequency linear polarized rack antenna. So we developed the small antenna that achieved the higher directivity by using the Huygens source concept, okay, Huygens source co concept. And then we realized it by the standard PCB technology, okay, standard PCB technology. And this is techni uh, technical details, so how this Huygens source, the uh, electric and magnetic dipole have been um, realized on the radiators. And we can say, um, so our uh, rectenna compared with the uh, conventional dipole rectenna, although we our uh, diameter is uh, much smaller, it's only 0.2 lambda, but it achieves the uh, higher, larger wireless power capture ca capability, I say from this simulation here, the power we capture more power than conventional dipole rectangle, okay, dipole antenna. And to realize that, we uh, integrate the rectangle, the antenna with the uh, highly efficient AC to DC converter. So the rectify, rectify. So first we uh, we, we uh, built the rectifier and uh, um, developed the rectifier itself and it achieved the uh, uh, AC to DC efficiency 80%, okay, 80%. And then we further uh, eliminate the lossy inductor on the rectified circuit uh, to achieve the overall efficiency up to 
uh, 90%, 90%. So this is a rectangle that we, we have developed rectangle, but it's a LP, it's a linear polarized. And the second design, we, um, we integrate the both the communication function and the uh, WPT function together in the same uh, very compact entity to using the uh, uh, orthogonal uh, formation, okay? Orthogonal form formation. And this uh, uh, achieves the both communication antenna mode and the rectangle mode, okay? Rectangle mode. And uh, so this published in the, this paper showing here, okay? This paper showing here. And uh, then we also developed the CP, okay? Uh, electric small antenna and rectangle. Okay, CP because um, in the linear systems, the transmitter and the receiver, they need to align with each other, okay, to enable the, um, the signal transmission, okay. If there's a misalignment for the linear system, the mismatch will happen, okay, mismatch will happen, but it's not a, uh, the issue for the CP systems. So no, ma no matter how you rotate the transmitter and the receiver, the trans uh, transmission is consistent. So it is very important for the IoT applications because the IoT devices are um, normally randomly placed. You, you, you will not know the orientation, the, uh, the alignment of the, uh, the IoT devices. So using CP is uh, um, probably a better option. So we developed the CP uh, antenna first, electric small antenna first, and then we uh, integrate our developed uh, rectifier into the CP system, okay, into a CP system. And uh, uh, CP system. And then we also uh, developed other excitation technique to get rid of the in, uh, lost inductor, okay, lost inductor to uh, achieve the highest achievable AC to DC converter in the antenna. And the last design is the uh, uh, we, yeah, we further develop the, the single substrate, okay, version, okay, compared with our original version, which used the three uh, sub PCB subject. Uh, we have the um, simpler uh, structure um, and uh, it's easier for fabrication and um, the efficiency improved, okay, efficiency improved. And um, uh, again, we, uh, seamlessly integrate the rectifier circuit, okay, rectifier circuit, and then we also built a uh, light sensor, okay, light sensor, demonstrate the light sensor. Uh, so this sensor in dark environment is inductive, and we uh, integrate acoustic siren, okay, um, on the, uh, on this device, and if the environment have some lights, the acoustic siren will alarm it. So this, it, we do not have any battery here, it's fully wirelessly powered, fully wireless powered. And there is a, a video demonstration and you can uh, search this uh, this paper in the set. So, uh, in the website, okay. Because the time issue, I will not show here. Uh, so, uh, this the, just showed the uh, right tenor side receiver devices. We also um, did some work on the transmitter side. So we developed the, the linear okay um, Huygens dipole antenna array. Okay, that achieved high directivity and broad beamwidth as well. And we theoretically uh, demonstrate that uh, this kind of antenna have uh, a noticeable feature is that. When the beam is, scan, is scanned at the lower side, the gain variation is very small. The gain variation is very small. So, which which means that when the beam is scanned to the um, larger angles, at larger angles, the, the gain, the power level is consistent. It's very important for WPT, uh, for the receiver side, because the rectangle, um, the output power is actually dependent on the input power. The efficiency is dependent on the input power. So we realized it by uh, the single piece of PCB, single piece of PCB, and we integrate the three by three button matrix uh, to the antenna for the demonstration, and we see the the beam steering performance. Okay, realized beam steering performance, and uh, it achieves the stable beam, and also wide beam wave on the the underplane. Okay, this is for the. 
transmitter side. So last but not least is the conclusion of some future works. Um, so glad that our uh, works in this topic have uh, uh, received uh, several awards and um, uh, best paper awards and also the, some, uh, the funding uh, from Australian government. And our future works is uh, we will continue work on this project and uh, trying to build the receiver um, integrated with the advanced energy storage uh, components such as the fuel supercapacitor and the graphene. So our um, the rack tenor can not only capture the power but can store the power into some uh, advanced uh, advanced okay um, devices storage devices and um, also we need to uh, integrate the uh, power management uh, circuit in the uh, devices and also um, we will uh, continue to build to uh, design the uh, smart beam forming and then array as the power transmitter on the um, transmitter side so there's still a lot of things going on here and um, <coughs> we are trying to work hard on this on, the, on these aims okay so thanks very much um, I think we are already over time so um, Thanks again for your attendance, very much appreciate it. Um, the, uh, on behalf of the IEEE Young Professionals, um, I hope you can join us, our society, and the, if you're interested, you can also follow our, our linking, okay? We have these two, um, we have the link, link uh, this link here, and uh, it's posted the news um, and events and, and happening in our society. Okay, so uh, once again, thanks very much. Uh, thanks for your uh, invitation to be here with you. Thank you. So if you have any questions, I'm glad to take questions. All right, thank you, Dr. Berlin. Um, so thank you. I'll, might I open up the, the, um, the floor for any question? Yeah, sure. I can take like one or two questions. Oh yeah, I can see that Rashida Hanan. Rashida. Yes. So thank you, Dr. Wayne, for your interesting talk. My name is Rashida. So I'm interested in the uh, rectenna that you mentioned in the uh, 5G or the terahertz region. So based on your design concept, the antenna needs to be aligned in the exactly same polarization for it to work. Do I understand this correctly? So, um, is this method or antenna only suitable for a stationary IoT device? Uh, like, how about uh, moving things like uh, flying drones? Can we wirelessly charge these kind of things? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Hi, uh, very good question. Uh, right, Residai, if I uh, pronounce right. Uh, thanks very much. Yes, yes that's correct. Very, <laughs> it's very good question. Yeah, actually, um, maybe uh, just, just too fast. I skipped the uh, uh, the one part that uh, um, I should present. So um, the first we developed the, the linear system. Okay, linear linearly polarized system. So for the linear system, that need alignment. You are very correct. That need alignment because if a mismatch happen, the transmission will the efficiency will drop significantly. So later on, we developed a, a CP, circularly polarized system as well, to avoid the issue that you, you mentioned, okay? So for the CP system, the transceiver and receiver, the change orientations, the transmission will um, keep consistent, right? Keep consistent. So in the applications, we do not know the, we do not, we cannot guarantee the um, the alignment okay of the transmitter and the receiver we need to use the cp system instead of the lp system so uh, we have already developed the cp version okay cp version which will avoid the polarization mismatch problem that may rise in the uh, uh, lp system that's a very good question yeah so in such a scenario we we have to use the cp okay uh, for the transmitter and receiver, so both are, is a C, CP, circular, circularly polarized system, can uh, avoid this issue. 
So hope uh, this answer your question. Yes, that was very clear. So I believe this in, is in your published paper, I think. Yeah, we uh, have, okay. um, yeah, we have uh, um, several paper published. Yeah, if you're interested, you can uh, search search for, for the uh, papers. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, thank you so much for your uh, clear answer. Thank you. Sorry, uh, you, uh, Dr. Sai, you uh, have oh, sorry, I'm mute. Speaking, uh, you mute yourself. Yeah, so uh, perhaps we can take like one more last question um, before we take a group photo. Any more question? Today is a very uh, interesting talk. I get a, a lot of comments from uh, from our participants. It's very uh, a good webinar and a very nice uh, presentations. Do you mind to share your slide uh, to all the participants today, Dr. Wevin? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I will. Uh, so I will send uh, uh, it to your email mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. Okay, uh, seems there is no more questions. Okay, uh, perhaps we can take a group photo for our last, um, for the memory. So I hope yeah, that everyone you. can turn on yeah, your camera. Uh, Dr. Lee, can you stop, uh, sorry, stop presentation? I, uh, yep. oh, okay, yeah, yeah, so stop screen share, okay. All right, so I can see everybody's faces now. Okay, everyone ready? Okay, I'll take a photo now. All right, one, two, three. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, send me a uh, email. So uh, I think you should have my email. So I'm happy to uh, answer uh, any questions from from you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much for for right. having me here. Right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Benin again. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.